Hello, welcome to the session Kafka, integrating the world's favorite stream processor with Inner Systems Iris. My name is Helen Bang, and I am a systems developer here at Inner Systems. It is my pleasure to show you all the exciting integration we are in the progress of with Kafka and Iris. The agenda for today's session includes a short introduction to Kafka and the IRIS interoperability framework, how Kafka is integrated with IRIS, and the short demo. By the end of this session, you will be able to leave with a thorough understanding of the integration and the excitement from our demo. So what exactly is Kafka? Kafka is a published subscribe based durable messaging system, exchanging and capturing data in real time between processes, applications, and servers. With Kafka, applications can connect and transfer a record, which can include any kind of information. Some of its key features are high performance, availability, and scalability. But apart from these, in becoming the world's favorite stream processor, Kafka benefited greatly from its events-driven architecture. This architecture, which I'm going to explain to you briefly, is ideal as the heart of the system when you need to process huge amounts of data. In a nutshell, with Kafka, applications can connect and transfer a record, which can include any kind of information. Another application can also connect and process or reprocess records from what is called a topic. Here, a topic is basically a category used to organize these records. Topics are defined within the Kafka broker, which handles all requests from clients and keeps data replicated within the Kafka cluster, which run on one or more servers, making this a durable messaging system. The two main parts in the Kafka system are the producers and the consumers. Here on the left, the producers are processes that push records into the Kafka topics within the broker. In contrast, a consumer pulls records off a Kafka topic. To be a bit more specific, a consumer can be reading data from one or more topics, or multiple consumers can be reading from a single topic. As topics can get quite big, they get split into par partitions of a smaller size for better performance and scalability. So to summarize, when an event happens, a producer sends a record to a given topic, which is then split into partitions. This then is read by either a single or multiple consumers in real time. To integrate this with Iris, we're going to have Iris act as a producer or and a consumer of Kafka. So how exactly will the integration work on Iris's side of things? To explain this, I will have to explain to you how the IRIS interoperability works. The interoperability production is an integration framework in IRIS for easily connecting systems and also for developing applications for interoperability. It provides built-in connections to a wide variety of message formats and communication protocols. It also provides persistent storage of messages allowing tracing path of a message and audit whether, whether a message is successfully delivered. Don't they sound familiar with the earlier slides on Kafka? Inside of production, there are three key elements called business hosts, and there are three kinds, um, which are the business services, the business processes, and the business operations. The business services, which connect with external systems and receives messages from them, and they also relay the messages to other business hosts. The business processes receive messages from other business hosts and either process these requests or just forwards them to other business hosts. The business operations, which receive messages from other business hosts in the production 
and they actually typically just send them to the external systems. The inbound adapters and the outbound adapters here in the diagram are not necessarily required, but can be used based on the design of the production. These business hosts communicate with each other via messages. All messages are stored in the IRIS database and can be seen via the management portal. To show you the entire message flow, we will use this diagram here. So if existing, an inbound adapter receives an incoming event here used um, as an envelope, transforms it into a message object and passes it to its associated business services. The business service creates a follow-on request message and passes this new message to a business process or a business operation within the production. A business process that receives a request message executes a predefined set of activities, either in sequence or in parallel. These activities may include sending follow-up messages to other business hosts. Business processes are also responsible for most or not all of the business logic in the production. A business operation encapsulates the cap capabilities of a resource outside inner systems IRIS, usually an external software application. The business operation transforms properties of the request message object into a format usable by the external application API. If it is ex existing, an outbound adapter manages and um, written details of communicating with a specific external system or application from within the production. It transmits the API call to the external entity. If we compare this framework with a Kafka system, we can easily notice that the business service is very similar to the Kafka consumer in that it receives messages from external systems and also that the business operation is very similar to the Kafka producer in that it sends messages to external systems. So we will have a business service here acting as the Kafka consumer and the business operation acting as the Kafka producer. So in order to make this happen, we use two pieces in IRIS interoperability, the production extension known as PEX and the Java gateway. First, the PEX framework provides the users with a choice of implementation languages when developing interoperability productions. It provides a flexible connection between business services, processes, and operations that are implemented in PEX-supported languages, which includes Java. Once integrated, the production components are called at runtime and use the PEX framework to send messages to other components in the production. Using PEX, we are able to build this part of the integration. Then Java Gateway provides an easy way for Iris to inter inter operate with Java components. In order to, for this integration to work, we need to make sure that the Java Gateway is up and successfully running. So the Java Gateway acts as the bridge between Iris and Kafka. So with these pieces, we're able to integrate IRIS with Kafka, business operation as the producer, and the business service as the consumer. This is a short demonstration of the Kafka and IRIS integration we have implemented. For the time being, I have already created a production for this integration called Kafka.KafkaAdapter. When opening a production, Iris displays the production configuration page, which is where we are going to start and test this production. As described earlier, we have Kafka service, which is the business service here, acting as the Kafka consumer, and the Kafka operation, the business operation here, acting as the Kafka producer. Clicking on each business host displays its settings including the Kafka server address and the Kafka topic. To begin the pro production, let's click the start button here at the top. First, 
Let's try to produce a message to the topic VS 2020. First, click on the Kafka operation and under the Actions tab, click on the Test button. This will pop up a new window asking the user the type of their request message. Scrolling through the bottom, we see the Kafka.Kafka request type, which includes two input boxes, the topic name and the text. Here, we will add the name of the Kafka topic to send the message to, which is VS2020 and the text. Hello. After these are complete, click on this button and the message hello is now sent to the specific Kafka topic. To check that this is correctly sent, we can first manually check this in our terminal by running this command line to view the messages in the topic VS2020. Here we see the text hello we just sent from Iris. Another way to consume this message is from Iris. Let's go back to the conf production configuration page. First, click on the Kafka service, then the messages tab. The content here shows a glimpse of the messages, but to take a better look at them, let's go to the message viewer. This will then display the message viewer page with all the messages for the Kafka service. This is sorted as newest first. So if we click on the first message on this list, then the body tab, we can see the message we just sent, hello. We can also consume a message produced from the command line via terminal. In terminal, Running this command line here will produce a message to the topic BS2020. Let's try to send the text world. Now this is sent, so let's view this in Iris. Here, the list is now updated and there is the message that we just sent, world. That was the end of the demo that we have prepared for you. Hope that this was helpful for your understanding of the Kafka and Iris integration. The two key takeaways from this session are that you have a basic understanding of both Kafka and the Iris interoperability framework, and a thorough understanding of how the integration between Kafka and Iris happened. If this session was interesting to you, I strongly encourage you to attend the session DEV000 Stay in Sync with Change Data Capture. Also, if you want more information on the interoperability productions, PEX or Java Gateway in a production, these are the associated documents on them. Lastly, if you would like to connect with us, feel free to contact us. Above is again, my name, Helen Bang, as well as my email address and my LinkedIn profile. And below is Bob, the PM for this project and his email address. Thank you for all your time and feel free to ask us any questions.